Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the Smart Art Box for September 2020. This video is brought to you by smartartbox.com. You can check out the link in the video description if you would like to subscribe or check out the different plans this company offers. This month's uh, topic or supply is metallic color pencils. And in the brochure here, they have a little bit of information about the month's topic, also all the supplies that come in the box. And they also have a simple project for you to do in case you don't have any ideas about what to do with the box. Box. I always ignore that because I want to jump in and just kind of use my own imagination. We get a set of 12 Derwent metallic color pencils here, and we also have a set of six sketching pencils from the Derwent Academy line, which is their introduction to our supplies line that they offer. We also have a Derwent Academy tri-point eraser, which I've never used this before, and I was really curious to feel how soft or hard it was, so I um, had to pop it right out of the package and kind of check it out immediately. I think this is something I will use like going forward because it will be really handy for getting in tight spaces in uh, pencil or pastel work. So I'm kind of kind of curious to give that uh, a lot of different uh, tryouts. I think it comes with a sticker as always, and there is a uh, pad of toned gray drawing paper. It's a smooth surface. It has a kind of a heathered flecked um, appearance, and it's about a mid gray value. And this comes with a set of Derwent Academy metallic pens. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but um, I think I will just kind of play around with it, doodle around and see what I can come up with. Now, my box is supposed to have a sweet in it, like a candy, but I think one of my kids might have gone to this box before I did, so I don't see that in there. And I'm not going to blame Smart Art because I'm pretty sure my kids got to it first. I started off by swatching the materials that came in the box on the paper that was provided. Because I typically don't work on a gray paper, I wanted to, um, especially if I'm using metallic products, I wanted to see how these were gonna react. I did swatch out the metallic pencils on black and white as well. They're very vibrant on white paper. They're vibrant um, if you use them plain on black paper, but if you add water to them, they do lose their metallic sheen. Now in the brochure, the it says that the pencils are not water soluble but um, what I think happened was I think that they got some misinformation because I know Derwent revamped their water their uh, metallic pencils last year and now they make them and they're not water soluble but prior to 2019 they were water soluble and the numbers are different so um, I think maybe some of us might have got the uh, wax based pencils and some of us might have got water soluble pencils so if you are a smart box subscriber let me know in the comments below what you got I'm starting off by sketching on a uh, on the tone paper. I'm just doing a profile of a face because I, I don't know. The first thing that came to mind was do a dragonfly because you're doing metallics. Do something like insecty. But then I thought, no, Lindsay, don't go with the most obvious choice. Do something different. You haven't done a, a just a portrait from your imagination in a long time. Why don't you do that? So that's what I'm sketching here. And um, I'm just, uh, and I sharpened my pencils with a knife and that's why I have that super long lead. It's something I've been experimenting with. Um, so I just kind of sketched a, you know, a girl looking sideways with a headband and some hair. Uh, and I'm just kind of coloring it in with the pencils because I wanted to see if I could get um, the contrast I needed, any of the colors that I needed, basically just playing around because I, I didn't want to go to my most obvious first idea. Um, Sometimes you should just, you're going to see, I might as well have just done that <laughs> to begin with, but, um, but I felt like just kind of playing and experimenting and that's what I'm doing here. I'm layering up the pencils using a really light touch so that I don't uh, scrape up the paper. Now I'm adding some water to this and the paper is quite thin. It's, it says 80 pound, but it almost feels, um, it feels rather light. It feels almost like a heavyweight typing paper, but not quite a cardstock, not like an 80 pound cardstock. It feels lighter than that. Um, I don't recall the GSM on this paper. GSM is usually a little bit more of a accurate way to describe paper than poundage because the parent sheet could be a different size and throw off the, uh, the poundage. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is a thin paper and it's wrinkling on me terribly when I'm using the water. Now in the brochure, it did say the pencils were insoluble, meaning that they probably didn't intend you to use water on this paper but um, the pencils have a little paintbrush icon and the tin says they're water soluble so um, I like water soluble stuff so you can bet your bottom dollar I'm using water on those um, and I have to disclaim I have used the metallic watercolor pencils in the past and I have not been thrilled with them so I was hoping that I might come up with some way to use them to a better advantage 
with this project. Um, I got a little heavy handed there with the eyebrow. It just wasn't going well. And I decided I was going to quit while I was ahead and or quit while I was behind. I don't know. And just try something different. And I decided to go to the idea I originally had, which was to do a dragonfly. I began sketching in a light green pencil because I figured that I would be able to kind of smoosh out anything that I didn't want to keep or erase it if I um, want to. I didn't actually use the eraser <laughs> that much in this just to clean up my pencil drawing the first time. Um, I don't tend, tend to use erasers very much. Um, and then once I got that basic drawing in, I decided to start throwing in some color. I um, put yellow or it's kind of goldish yellow. It was more of a yellow than a gold, to be honest, um, on the edges of the wings because I, I didn't want to use the gold gold because I don't think it has that enough pop and I really struggled getting enough contrast on this gray paper with these pencils so that was probably my primary issue creating this piece um, I'm not terribly happy with it and I did struggle I am not gonna sugarcoat it here I had a hard time with this um, I started putting on the pencil pretty thick because I knew I was going to need a lot of pigment to compete with the tone of the paper and um, I just kept uh, just kept filling in until I had my my picture base coated. I wanted to give the dragonfly a little branch to stand on, so I did sketch that in, but I'm gonna need to fill it in with some, uh, with some more pencil later. I'm adding some water just to tone all of the portions of the dragonfly to see if I can get a good um, base layer for everything. Because I figure if I start with the pencils and I dilute them, then I can use the metallic pens on top and they will stick pretty well. I didn't think they would stick very well over a waxy surface and if I had used the, um, the pencils like that and then tried to go over with the pens. I just don't think they would have stuck. I think you need to kind of thin them down first and, and lock them into the paper. Now, when I was sharpening my bronze paper uh, pencil, the lead came out. So I just threw that in a palette and sprayed it with water so I could make some paint that I used to paint this, uh, the branch with. So that was that I guess it was copper. I think it was copper color. The copper color was nice and rich. I did like that. One thing I did notice when I added water to these is that they definitely dulled down. They didn't keep that metallic shine, but they weren't all that shiny when I used them straight on this paper. I think you really need a black paper or a really, really dark jewel tone paper for that to work. So if you have this box, I highly recommend you experiment with other papers that you have in your stash. In fact, I did uh, a little flower with the, um, the pink pencil from this set, and it was really pretty. You could get a lot of tone and shade, but it just didn't work that well on the gray paper. So I would say give it, give it a try on some watercolor paper and play with it on your black thick cardstock or black watercolor paper if you have it and uh, see what other effects you can get from these if you got the water soluble pencils like I did. You may have gotten um, non soluble pencils and in that case, um, you obviously wouldn't be adding water to it. If you wanted to dissolve it, you could use some odorless mineral spirits or Gamzol or something like that. Um, but I figured using water wasn't really going to uh, be like some, everybody could get a little bit of water pretty much to, uh, to work with their art. Um, so now I let that dry and I'm going in with the Derwent pens and I'm using this metallic black, which actually is the darkest pen, darkest pen, and it doesn't even look that metallic. When I had that one swatched out out of all the pens, that one barely had any sheen to it. So I thought, ah, this is going to be good for getting my contrast. It's got a very fine tip on it though. So you have to be careful. I mean, it's, you can't really cover really big areas with it. So I was just trying to be a little um, careful with it because I didn't want to use it up or wear it down. Uh, at the beginning. So, and I was also a little concerned that it might pick up some of that pencil since the pencil is water soluble that the moisture in that pen might pick some of that up and clog the nib because I did notice some of my pens stopping like they didn't want to put out that much ink after using them for a few minutes over the pencil. Um, so that's another thing you might want to be careful of if you're doing a layering effect where you're using the pens over the pencil. Um, you might want to scribble it on a scrap paper before you put the pen away or if you notice the ink is flowing slowly scribble it on a scrap piece of paper to um, get that um, that pigment from the pencil off the nib. Now I'm doing some cross hatching and some pretty wild uh, strokes here with the pens to try to get the um, almost a uh, window screening pattern on the dragonfly wings because it just needed something. It was such a large air part of this picture that it was just dull as a stump and I needed to do something to liven up this uh this artwork because I was just man oh man I was struggling here and so finally I just got frustrated with my lack of contrast and I grabbed a black marker to do the background because I just couldn't there was there was it was all mid-range values I couldn't get um I couldn't get anything really light with those pencils and I couldn't get anything really dark uh the darkest 
uh, graphite pencil was a 2B or 3B that came in that kit. And I knew that was also going to shine because graphite's very shiny and I wouldn't get that dark color with graphite. I thought about grabbing the Higgins ink from last month's Smart Art box, but um, I just figured I would save myself a whole lot of frustration and grab a marker because I knew there's no way I wouldn't spill that ink or it wouldn't seep through the other layers of my sketchbook and just annoy me. So, so I grabbed a marker. I actually had to use two markers because this paper was super absorbent, not very great for markers. And, uh, and my marker just couldn't, didn't have recovery time while I was trying to fill the background up. Plus I have reinker for those markers. So, um, so I didn't mind if I, if I ran it dry, I could always refill it. Surprisingly, there wasn't a ton of bleed through, um, onto the next page. So it was just, um, it just seemed, didn't seem to want to recover very quickly. I think the paper's kind of absorbent. I didn't have feathering issues though, which was good. Um, I think it might be like a recycled paper. Maybe that's why. Maybe there's some leftover sizing, but it did definitely want to kind of suck the ink out of the alcohol markers. And then uh, I just kind of traced some edges with the black pen again that came in the kit just to give it some really sharp um, edges. And, you know, that's pretty much all I did. I struggled with it, but I'm glad I persevered and gave these pencils another try. They're still not a favorite. I still don't really like them that much, but, um, you know, some boxes are great. Some boxes are your, are ones you really like, and some aren't to your taste. And that's kind of what you get with, with uh, subscription boxes. You never quite know what you're going to get, but it does, um, force you to try new things and grow as an artist. I want to thank Smart Art Box for sponsoring this video today. You can check out the link in the video description and, uh, see what they have to offer. You can subscribe to Mystery Boxes every month Month, like I get here on the channel or you can purchase boxes that are curated and you know what you're getting. So thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy if you liked this. Until next time, happy crafting.